Okay. Let us continue. Hopefully I can finish it either tonight or tomorrow before work. Dunkelfelder's response. It was third bell. The scholars had announced that Dunkelfelder was once again trying to contact us via the emergency tool. So I got with Ferdinand to answer their call. Ob Dunkelfelder wasn't the only one on the other end this time. His first wife, Segunde, was there with him. In regards to yesterday's discussion, how do you respond, Ferdinand asked the Ob. Protecting the Royal Academy, defending Jurgen Schmidt, and rescuing the Royal Family are our greatest priorities. And as the Zent soared, we cannot remain inactive when there are other options before us. We petitioned Lady Rosemont to grant us her orders. Of course. Dunkelfelder was determined to protect Jurgen Schmidt no matter the danger. And in truth, the strength of their conviction moved me. Segonde didn't oppose the declaration, she merely watched us in silence. As she was here at all, indicated that her entire duchy supported this course of action. Very well, I said, I request your aid to protect the Royal Academy and, in turn, all of Jurgen Schmidt. We seek to follow the avatar of Messinora, the Ob replied. We must make it clear to all those of the Royal Academy that righteousness is on our side. He probably wanted me to flaunt my Grutenscheit when we arrived. Worry not, we shall travel to the Royal, to the Academy via its country gate, so our presence alone will prove we have a Grutenscheit. Using the gates again, are we, second day asked? That certainly will show everyone you are a legitimate Zent candidate. Ob Dunkelfelder nodded. In that case, I will inform the knights that before the Ob could spring up and take his leave, his wife grabbed it onto his cape. First, I will propose we bring each other up to speed on what we know about our situation, she said with a crafted smile. Lord Ferdinand, if you would do me that courtesy. Of course, Ferdinand replied, smiling back at her. Second day and Ferdinand seemed like they'd get along swimmingly. I could see them being a pair of assassins or something. Because of recent developments here in Ehrensbach, Ferdinand said, our dormitory is closed and we can obtain intelligence about the sovereignty and royal academy only from Ehrenfest. An unfortunate circumstance, as their, their only source of information is the research-obsessed Professor Herscher. Herscher really was dedicated to her research, and it was common knowledge that she wasn't cut out to be a dormitory supervisor. Stressing our reliance on her immediately demonstrated how little we knew. Secondly, must have understood as much because she began sharing what she'd learned from Raffin. Lady Rosemont, are you aware that Ob Ehrenfest spoke with the royal family on the day of your dinner invitation? I am, I replied. We met with, he met with Prince Sigiswald and discussed my leave for Ehrensbach. I was given a, a crest to wield royal authority. I wasn't wearing it now since the chain was on the verge of turning into dust, but I was still carrying it with me. Once the Zent heard the news from Prince Sigiswald, he told the supervisors to stay in their dormitories and ordered the Sovereign Knight's order to guard the door to Ehrensbach's dormitory. Professor Herscher didn't mention that, did she? I paused and thought, Herscher must have chosen to interpret the king's words as, you can hole up anywhere as long as you're not roaming about, and elected to stay in the scholar building. Our hands were too full sending volunteers to Ehrensbach and preparing knights to sortie at the sovereignty's call, so I did not exchange any other words of Roth and Segon they continued. She had received the almost impossible task of controlling the men riled up in preparation for their game of true ditter. By the time the volunteers were due to leave for Ehrensbach, Dunkelfelder still hadn't received any further correspondence from the royal family. Their only choice was to proceed to the country gate. A message hadn't even arrived in their absence. They had returned to find themselves still without any further orders. We anxiously awaited dawn, at which point we received a letter from Hanalore. She wanted permission to lead our volunteers to protect Ehrenfest's foundation and stated that Lady Rose Mine had obtained Aaron's box. We attempted to inform the Zen that the fighting in Aaron's box had concluded, but we could not reach him directly. Uh, Dunkelfelder hadn't been too surprised. He'd said the Zent was probably occupied with the fighting. Second day hadn't considered it suspicious either. One needed to touch the water mirror's face stone to activate it. So unless both parties were available at the same time, they wouldn't be able to communicate. They'd expected the scholar to tell the Zent that they'd called and assumed he they would receive an update in short order. But an entire day later, still nothing. That's not suspicious at all! His patience running thin, Ob Dunkelfelder had elected to contact Raffin, but there was nothing he could tell me. For he had stayed in our dormitory as per the king's instruction. His response stated only that he was continuing to wait. Raffin had always struck me as someone who would, would abandon orders to wait around when there was fighting to be done, but I must have been mistaken. Harsher had a thing or three to learn from him. He did eventually leave, whereupon the knights stationed outside Aaron's box dormitory began to chastise him. He convinced someone he knew in the Sovereign Knights Order to send an ordinance requesting an update on the situation, and the response confirmed that the royal family had safely evacuated. As for their silence, the Zent had decided it wasn't worth summoning Dunkelfelder when the invaders had yet to show themselves. I informed Raffin that Lanzanov had been purged from Ehrensbach and that we needed the Zent to contact us nonetheless. As it turned out, Raffin's associate had sent the ordinance announcing the purge of Lanzanov just after the royal family had told Ehrenfest they didn't care about the current status of Ehrensbach. Oh. 
They must have thought it best to discuss the matter with the Zen. The bare minimum of knights were left in the central building, and normalcy returned to the Royal Academy and sovereignty. That same afternoon, Herscher had sent ordinances to various people, warning them of the outsiders who had infiltrated the Royal Academy. Rob, the commander of the Sovereign Knights Order, had responded at once, ordering her to return to her dormitory. Robin set out for the Scholar Building when he heard about the intruders the Ob noted. He had grown frustrated during his time holed away in the dormitory and sent an ordinance to Rob, bar bargaining for permission to join the coming battle. He showed more restraint than most, but in the end he was still a man of Dunkelfelder. The Ordinandus had sent out, and in Rothen's surprise, flown almost straight down to the forest near the Scholar Building where he had already been headed. He had watched the bird as it approached a group of knights working with people he had never seen before. They were all wearing black capes, but perhaps a dozen among them were not clad in armor, a good indication that they were not knights. Most notable of all was a woman with bright blonde hair adorned with gaudy accessories. Lady Dead Linda, I presume. She had some nerve to wear her over-the-top hair ornaments at a time like that. I wanted to be exasperated, but part of me respected her overwhelming display of girl power, which would forever be beyond me. It seems safe to assume that even the Lanzanavians were finding her a pain to deal with. I can already imagine her launching into one of her sparkly dances. Oh, God. Ten some individuals who were not knights, you say, Ferdinand asked from behind me. Indeed, we cannot give an exact number because they were largely concealed, but we can say with all certainty that the knight commander was with them. He appeared to be instructing them to stay hidden in the forest. Robin turned around without a second thought and started making his way back to our dormitory. He was passing through the central building when he received an ordinance from Robot stating that it was the duty of the Sovereign Knight's order and nobody else to find and capture the intruders. Unable to determine the Knight Commander's intentions or where the information might spread, Robin had instructed the other professors not to leave their rooms under any circumstances. He had then sent word to Dunkelfelder, leaving it up to the Ob to decide what he should do next. Ob Dunkelfelder wishes only to protect the Royal Academy, and with Lady Rosemind's orders, we can now start a battle on its defense, Segunde noted. However, in this case, our enemies and their locations are uncertain. We cannot say whether only a portion of the Sovereign Knight's order is behaving strangely under Robot, or the entire order is compromised. There is even a chance the Zent told him to fraternize with the outsiders as a means of securing them. If we do not know our opponents, then we do not know where to attack. That is a good point, because... The Zen could have told Rabba to do this, and if you tried to stop it, you would risk blowing his cover. Because he would have to either go against his orders and fight against you guys, or, or go against his orders and secure them before he was able to, and risk, you know, causing more problems, or, yeah. Second, they had acutely identified the problem with our situation. Unlike tr during True Dinner, where the foundations were the main focus of most battles, we had no idea what we needed to target. She asked if we had any more intelligence that might be of use in that regard. The London of Estate seems to provide access to some place other than the Ehrensbach dormitory. Lord Ferdinand, would you happen to know where? Yes, but I must ask that you keep it a secret. This is information I acquired only upon moving to Ehrensbach and assisting its ob. The London of Estate contained a teleportation circle to a villa where another country's princesses once lived. Now that Rosemond is still on Ehrensbach's foundation, its previous ob's brooches no longer hold any power, meaning that Lindy's group cannot access their dormitory. I would assume they had moved to the villa instead. It was sealed after the Civil War, and the princesses inside were all executed. Is there anything more you can tell us about it, Ob Dunkelfelder? I was amazed. By choosing his words carefully and redirecting the question, Ferdinand had discreetly implied that he was much too young to have a satisfying answer. Nice. Good job, Ferdinand. The Ob glanced at his first wife, then gave a slightly uncomfortable nod. As I understand it, the door leading inside can be found in the, recreate the rearmost section of the central building. The Royal Academy Central Building contained doors to the various dormitories, which were lined up according to the Duchy's rankings. At the far end were the Royal Family's villas, but if one went even further than that, an especially rare occurrence, one would come across a door hidden behind the seal of Verbergen, Verbergen the God of Concealment. That was the entrance to the Indulgence of Villa. According to Aaron's box documents, the villa is fairly close to Verbergen's shrine, Ferdinand added. For Bergen's shrine, Segunde repeated, slowly drawing her eyebrows together. She must have not known the location of every shrine at the Royal Academy. That couldn't have been too unusual. I'd only found out, uh, out from looking through the underground archive. I can tell you roughly where to find it, I said. Back when I was helping the Royal Family translate documents in the underground archive, I saw a map depicting the location of every shrine at the Academy. The placement of the dormitories made the Academy's grounds look something like a shrunken down map of Jürgen Schmidt. That, coupled with Aaron's box country gate being associated with darkness and the fact that Yer Ber Bergen was a subordinate of the same element, made it obvious that the shrine we were looking for was near Aaron's box dormitory. The villa might be impossible to find from the outside without prayers or magic circles from, er from 
On Hall Tung, the goddess of advice, a subordinate of the goddess of light said when they mused aloud. I see. However, in the same way that using teleportation circles requires the approval of the relevant OBS, entering the Adultus of Villa will most likely require the approval of the royal branch family that manages it. But alas, we are not yet sure who they are or why the teleportation hall of a sealed villa was open and ready to accept Aaron's buck invaders. Professor Roffin's account paints Rabba as fairly suspicious as it eliciting stern nods from everyone else. That said, Ferdinand interjected, although Rabla is our most likely culprit, we have only one eyewitness to rely on. Raymond did not mention seeing Sovereign Knights with the intruders in his report. Rabla would only declare that he was trying to capture Detlinde when he was spotted. Furthermore, Knight Commander or not, an Archnoble having control over that villa makes no sense, Segunde added. How long had, has he had the key? And why is he supporting Lady Detlinde and the Londonavians? We lack far too much information. I was nodding in agreement with those very sound points when a sharp smack drew my attention. Abdunkabegger had slammed a determined fist against his open palm. The main takeaway is we no longer need or wonder, need to wonder about the Royal Academy in a blind search for outsiders who shall launch an attack on this Berbergen hidden villa tonight. I was completely taken aback. We were all bemoaning our lack of evidence, so why was the Ab proposing an ambush all of a sudden? Ferdinand grimaced at such a blatant lack of awareness while Segonde placed an exasperated hand on her forehead. We already know about the outsiders, don't we? Abdunkabegger continued making his argument with a broad grin. Destroying what seems to be their base of operations takes precedence. They should all be there at the dead of night, and that's when we'll strike. Ferdinand crossed his arms. Though I appreciate the idea of crushing them all with one quick measure, will you not need to work with the other duchies? Have you laid the groundwork for such a conspiracy co cooperation? Yeah, you're going to probably need the help of some of the others to do this, not just Aaron Vest. Indeed, if our two duchies acted alone, the others would assume we had tried to seize the glory for ourselves. They might even accuse us of acting against the king's best interests during the next Archduke conference. Making them aware of our plans before we took action was particularly important. They were all spineless cowards, the Ob replied. Involving them is out of the question. Abdelkafaka really had invited the other duchess to help protect the Royal Academy. And they had all replied they would need three days to prepare to sortie. They wasted time to investigate, one of time to investigate the Royal's current status, mobilize their knights, Select which of them will participate and prepare magic tools and potions. Depending on the scale of the battle, there was a chance they would also need to move servants to the dormitory to attend to rooms and prepare food. In response, the exasperated Abdunkafucker had shouted, Would you sit on your hands if massive babies were attacking? The other Obs had said it was a poor comparison when we were potentially on the verge of war. Hmm, to be honest, I'm not sure I can side with Dunkelfelger on this one. How many other duchies are prepared for a battle like this at the drop of a hat? I agree, because Dunkelfelger would probably be the only crazy one enough, ready enough to do that at a moment's notice. Dunkelfelger was a reliable ally to be sure, but we couldn't expect anyone else to match their readiness for combat. Agreed. Aaron Fessen needed at least a month to prepare for Georgine's attack. That Lindy, a self-proclaimed Zet candidate, was spotted among the intruders of the Ops said plainly that goal, their goal must be the Grutescheid, and even if we put her aside, the Lanzanavians pose a tremendous threat as descendants of, shoot, Tolkienheimt. If we base our estimation on the princesses they sent over, then we cannot risk underestimating how much mana they have. Oh my, and why might you know how much mana these princesses had? Segonde asked with a calm smile. Uh oh. I solicited a grunt from her husband who was evidently unsure how to respond. Did you participate in this, dude? Hmm? Uh, Duncan Beggar's concerns are perfectly valid, Ferdinand said. He had given the man a stern look but proceeded to support him nonetheless. Lanzanov has sent its princesses to maintain the city that Tolkien Height built. They had relations with Jürgen Smith's royal family, and the child of theirs with the most mana was returned to Lanzanov upon attaining a stab. Knowing one's history is enough to deduce that the princesses had plenty of mana. Indeed, the Ob added with a shameless nod. Lord Ferdinand is correct. According to Detlinde's letter, Ferdinand continued a more vacant look in his eyes. There was one such child among those who invaded the Royal Academy, a boy who was raised to be the king of Lanzanov. Come again? He has a Far more mana than the current royal family, and a stap to boot. It is written that, in order to obtain a stap, a child of the villa must be registered to a royal branch family. There is no way for us to check whether that registration still exists, but depending on the location of his medal, he might be able to, able to obtain the Grutrishite at any moment. Vernon said nothing about the fact that one had to pray at each of the Royal Academy shrines as part of the process. His wise omission made the looming threat seem even worse, like it was right in our faces. Good idea. Keep that information to yourselves. But yeah, if you can find the medals, uh, or find his medal, shouldn't you be able to kill him with the medal like he did in Haas? Right? 
But you'd have to get his blood to do that. I don't care if the other duchies keep hiding their, biding their time. We will attack tonight, the Ob declared. We cannot allow a foreigner to take the Grigishite. Even if Robert leads the Sovereign Knight's order against us, we shall crush every last Lanzanavian who dares to cross us. Let us take action when the date changes, Ferdinand added. We shall go by high beast from our dormitory to the villa. May we act faster than Stive Brace, the goddess of the gale. Okay, when are we going to get to the epilogue? And the prayers and the departure. And there he goes, I said. Ob Dunkelberger ended our call as soon as he made his last declaration, leaving us staring into the empty water. He sure seems to like that faster than Stive Breeze phrase, huh? It does seem like the kind of saying his people would take to, Ferdinand replied, while putting the tool away. I cannot shake my suspicion that his knight's tales of true ditter have brought out his thirst for battle, but still, we need to finish our purge of the Lanzanavian sooner rather than later, definitely. It would also be wise to remember that Robla used the royal family's order to protect the royal academy as a cover for his fraternizing with the enemy. Verna gave his forehead a few taps, then continued in a much lower voice. I was hoping the Sovereign Knights would dispatch the remaining Lanzanavians, or the Lanzanavians would mis massacre the royals while we were in Aaronfest. Really? Sorry. Really, dude? Why would you want... Aren't we planning on... Whatever. That both parties have survived is rather troublesome. He spoke with a completely straight face, which made it all the more terrifying. Vernon, I said, staring up at him. Was that not a rather violent thing to say? Ah, I was frustrated that the situation did not go as I anticipated, but I should not have made that, uh, made that so apparent. I will take care to better disguise such remarks in the future. That wasn't what I meant. You shouldn't casually bemoan the absence of a massacre. Do you not realize how scary that sounds? Well, doi. As much as I agreed that the royals were a pain to big deal with, I didn't want Deadlinda's group or the Lanzanavians to kill them all. A tragedy like that would only leave a bad taste in my mouth. The most I wanted was a guarantee they would never bother me again. You are as moderate as ever, Ferdinand said, then looked around the office. Eckhart, have Strahl and the others returned yet? They spent the night traveling by High Beast and are expected to arrive soon. Inform them to, upon their return to rest until Seventh Bell. Send ordinances to the knights and scholars telling them to be ready for a fight the very moment that date, the date changes. Sir. Ferdinand then turned to Justice. How goes the scholar's production of rejuvenation potions and magic tools? Things are proceeding smoothly under Hartman and Clarissa's guidance. Good. Have them continue as they are. Though I should note that Hartman and Clarissa are making tools only for Lady Rose, my justice added with a wry smile, of course. Ferdinand told my knights to take turns resting before he ran it on me. Rose, mind, regarding the coming battle, you will not be participating. Uh-oh. Huh? But you need me to activate the teleportation circle, don't you? Correct. You will teleport the knights from Ironsbuck's country gate to the Royal Academy, then you will return here. There's no need for you to get involved any more than that. Excuse me, she's not going to let you go fighting off when you're not even feeling well. Heck no. On the one hand, I was relieved that I wouldn't need to fight, but on the other, I was racked with unease. I was the one who had succeeded, who had accused Aaron's Buck of treason, stolen its foundation, and announced to everyone my intention to become its new Ob. It wouldn't be right of me to leave capturing the Lanzanavians to Ob Dunkelfucker and Ferdinand, who still wasn't formally associated with Aaron's Buck. Ferdinand, do I not need to participate in my capacity as an archduchess? Is it not Ob Aaron's Buck's duty to capture Lady Deadlandy and the Lanzanavians? You were not hoping to take part, were you? Of course not, but what does that have to do with anything, I asked, staring intensely at him. Is it truly acceptable for me to stay behind and abandon my duty as an ob? He's, she's got a point. She's going to be the leader. She's got to act like it. Ferdinand grimaced, looking equally as intense. I agree that your involvement would make the most sense, but there's no way to make that happen while you are in your current state. I shall carry out your duty for you. Simply wait for my return. I refuse, I said with a strict glare. I might ask for your help sometimes, but I'm not going to dump my workload on you. Don't treat me like I'm a Sylvester, like I'm Sylvester. And on top of that, even if we intend to leave in the dead of the night, then a certain someone needs rest far more than I do. Yeah, he does. He was up, I don't know if he was up all night, or he was up a good portion of the night making that brew for the Grutishite, but yeah, he needs rest now. He needs to go to bed. Get some rest before he has to leave. Hello? Kind of, kind of common sense there. Can't really fight at your best if you're not at your best. Of course, I wasn't speaking out of a newfound appreciation for my role. I might even have agreed to let Sylvester act in my stead if not for how weary he seemed. Eckhart and Justice gave firm nods of agreement. Thank you. Rose, mind, Ferdinand muttered, clearly on his guard. Just what are you planning? She's not planning anything. She just wants you to rest. Our preparations are already in full swing. Hartman and Clarissa are used to the process, and the knights know exactly what they need to do. 
It was through your assistance that I was able to sleep peacefully to allow me to return the favor. Eckhart understood exactly what my intentions were. He knows what you're going to do. He moved behind Ferdinand, ready to catch him, while I took out my staff and started to pray. O Schlaftrum, god of dreams, may Ferdinand be blessed with pleasant sleep and joyous dreams. You fool, Ferdinand grumbled. He must have been in dire need of rest because he passed out even quicker than Letizia. Wow! <laughs> yeah, he needed to sleep. Thank you, Rosemine. Our late night departure meant that I would need to take an afternoon nap of my own, but there were some important matters I needed to attend to first. I summoned Hartman's group and asked them for the best way to seek out a villa hidden by Verbergen, Verbergen and then instructed them to prepare whatever magic circles we would need. If the villa and its door are too hard to find because they bear Verbergen's sigil, then it might help to search for them using the sigil of Unhaltung, the goddess of advice, I said, relaying what I had discussed with Segunde and Abdunkelfugger. Hartman crossed his arms in thought, then cast his eyes down as if searching through his memories. The magic circle you desire must be especially rare. Barely any of the Academy's courses explore circles meant for finding things. Have you encountered it before at least? Lady Rose mind, Lenore interjected. While I agree with using Anal Tongue's power to expose our enemies, could we not also employ Verbergen's seal? Doing so would allow us to act in secret, which should aid us tremendously in our ambush. That is a good point. You could do that too. As a two disgusted thoughts, I formed my book of Messinora and started researching Verbergen and on Hall Tongue. There was no need to be discreet, everyone here already knew about my Bible. Hartman, this magic circle looks like it might work, I said, then transferred it onto a sheet of paper. There were holes in its design, but I was knowledgeable enough to fill them in. Nice. You have no issues with magic circles then, Hartman asked as he accepted my work? No, none at all. I do not feel anything in particular while drawing them. In that case, we might be able to circumvent the need to use ordinances by modifying the order. Or Dolchnelli magic circle used to make them. You will need something of the sort if you intend to join the battle. From there, Hartman asked me to find out as much as I could about Ordos or Dolchnelli that it wasn't already covered in the Academy's lessons. He was being impressively insightful, so I gave my book another search. I'm not sure I'll find much, though. Ferdinand's Bible contained a lot more about old magic circles than mine. I started to look, then peered up at Hartman and cocked my head. Are you not sleep deprived, Hartman? You might not be in as bad shape as Ferdinand, but you haven't rested nearly enough, have you? Oh, would you grant me Schlaftrum's blessing, he asked, raising an eyebrow in amusement. I shot a quick glance at Clarissa, who was clapping her hands in front of her chest, ready to beg. Of course, Hartman, I understand just how hard you've been working. I would not refuse to grant you a single blessing. In that case, I shall ask for one when Lord Ferdinand awakens. We cannot have you lose any more retainers. I gazed around and remembered that my knights were taking turns to rest in preparation for tonight. Eckhart and Justice were also sleeping so they could attend to Ferdinand once he was awake and operating at full strength. Fear not, Hartman continued with a slight smile. I shall sleep. <laughs> no, don't say that like that, you idiot. I shall sleep with you, Lady Rose. <laughs> I can't even see it with a straight face. Hartman, Lenore said, mind your phrasing. Thank you. Just say it a different way. Jesus Christ. You could have simply said that you plan to sleep at the same time as her. Duh. That's what I'm saying. Why did you have to phrase it like that? You made it weird. Until then, I spent my time drawing magic circles on the fade paper Hartman and Clarissa had made, speaking with Letizia about how many nobles had probably exited through the lawns of estate, and so on. Ferdinand, I said, you're up early. It wasn't even fifth bell yet. I thought Ferdinand would need more sleep, but he looked alert and much healthier than before. Sleep will do wonders. Rose might obtain permission before using blessings that will disturb the schedules of those you cast them on, he retorted. Practice what you preach, then, I replied with a glare. He had blessed me without asking not too long ago. I shall work on it. Ferdinand said with a nod and a grimace. So, what wonderful dream did you have? Mine was about reading in a glorious library. It was nothing worth mentioning. What? I wonder what he dreamt about. Maybe we'll find out in this book or maybe the next book? That's strange. Was my prayer not strong enough? I'd like to not to use too much mana since Ferdinand had fallen asleep almost at once, but maybe that wouldn't have been a great idea? Do not worry about such trivial matters. On a more important note, have you received any updates? How are the preparations coming along? He was looking not at me, but at Hartman. Ah, employing si Verbergen's sigil to help in our concealment. I see, a fine idea. We intend to use it, of course, but we should distribute some of to Dunkelfelger's knights as well. Are we not going to blow our cover simply by teleporting to the Royal Academy, I asked, wondering whether stealth truly was an option. Dunkelfelger's country gate shone like a beacon when we used it. Ferdinand gave his temple a few contemplative taps. It would still serve as well to prepare some. Incidentally, Lady Letizia told me she wished to speak about the instant death poison before the battle. Her current status meant she cannot discuss it openly with her, and my knights would not have let me be alone with her in the first place, so I said that I would need to wait until you were awake. Do you have time to weigh in? 
It seemed only natural that the Londonavians at the academy would use the same poison as their countrymen. Speaking with Letizia felt like a wise decision. Maybe she knew something about it we had yet to consider, but at the same time, I wanted to know what Ferdinand thought. He was her victim in this matter, after all. Yes, he replied at length. I will see her. Information about Londonav has been exceptionally hard to come by. Then I will prepare tea, and since you missed lunch, I suspect you will also need a light meal. I turned to Lazletta, who chuckled and said, You have looked so worried since lunch that we opted to take the initiative and prepare some food we could serve at any moment. Would you prefer Aaron's Bok cuisine or dishes from Aaronfest? Ferdinand wasn't even open, able to open his mouth before just reply, The dishes from Aaronfest, if you would. <laughs> wow. It's spoke for him, why don't you? Lazletta and Sergius moved to the adjacent room to oversee the preparations of our tea. In the meantime, I asked Grisha to summon Letizia to the tea party room. Once everyone was, ga everyone was gathered and we had our tea, Letizia included, Ferdinand activated an area-wide magic tool. So what would you like to share with us, he asked. Letizia took a deep breath and then said, The Lanzanavians conceal their dangerous poisons within silver tubes. I am well aware, Ferdinand said curtly. On top of that, Rosemont saw the poison in action during the Battle of Aaronfest, so we need no more information about how it functions. Letizia's eyes wandered as she sought her next words. They have some form of medicine that makes them immune to their poison. That is why they can use it without covering their mouths. Take care. Medicine? Yes, it looks and tastes just like the sweets they tainted out as souvenirs, but the co core is somewhat bitter. Lady Detlendi and, Lady and Lord Leonzio called me over and gave me some on my way to the Mana Replenishment Hall. In other words, she had received the medicine immediately before her meeting with Ferdinand. They had arranged to discuss her head attendant, Roswitha, who had vanished two days prior. The poison is exceptionally dangerous in enclosed spaces, Letizia continued. Shortly after your retainers fled, Lord Leonzio used it inside the Ops office. In a single moment, everyone except Fairsia and me were turned into... She fell silent, her lip trem her bit her trembling lip and cast her eyes down. Back in Aaronfest, only Archinal was closely related to the Ob could enter his office. During manner replenishment, could a group that powerful really have died in the blink of an eye? I imagine my own retainers being turned into face stones and immediately clapped a hand over my mouth. Oh, don't think about that, don't think about that. So their poison is extremely dangerous, and they have medicine that makes them essentially immune to it, Ferdinand concluded. That will do, you may leave. I understood. Please, please be careful, Letizia pleaded, her blue eyes wet in frustration. The Londonavians view us only as a source of mana. And with that, she took her leave. Rosemont, are you okay? Ferdinand asked. I feel somewhat nauseated, but that's all. I resolved to hear everything Leti Lady Letizia wished to tell us. And in any case, she saw things far worse than anything I witnessed. Letizia needed care and consideration far more than I did. There was no way the things she'd seen hadn't traumatized her. As much as I want, might want to help her, it will need to wait, Ferdinand replied. She brought about that situation in the first place. Our focus right now should be ensuring that nobody else meets the same end as her retainers. He was right. We couldn't leave the Londonavians as they were. I nodded, took his outstretched hand, and stood up. You still need to rest, do you not? Ferdinand asked. Would you care for another blessing tonight? I slept so peacefully last night that I doubt another would even work on me. Hartman needs it far more, which is why I promised to bestow it upon him. Go to sleep already. I shall visit his chambers and grant the blessing for you. Not even by the greatest stretch of the imagination would you be able to carry an almost fully grown man. Ferdinand then sighed. I really must not have appreciated being carried away by Erkert. <laughs> I couldn't fault his logic, though. Hartman was a man, meaning I wouldn't even be able to enter his room, so maybe it really was best to let him take over. Ferdinand granted me the blessing in spite of my refusal. I didn't immediately fall asleep this time, but I did end up having nice dreams. I would need to see about receiving it every night from now on. By the time I awoke, our preparations were complete. I put on my riding clothes, then went to the staging area together with my guard knights. The fighting has stretched on for days now, Ferdinand said, as he gazed upon our main force. Eighty errands, Bach knights, my knights, and a portion of our scholars. You have not had the luxury of resting at your leisure, so I realize you are not at your best. Our group might not have been the largest. We needed to have more people behind to protect Ehrensbach, but our main manpower was far greater than anything Ehrenfest could provide at the moment. Combined with the Knights of Dunkelfelder, we ha wouldn't have any trouble come conquering the Adalgis of Villa. However, Ferdinand continued, we must make do. We cannot leave the villains who ravaged Ehrensbach to their own devices. We must restore peace to this land, both for our new ob and to prove we are not traitors ourselves. We must drag those shameless Lanzanavian dogs from their den, capture them, and toss them before the Zent. In response, Eckert slammed the butt of his spear against the ground. The knights stomped their boots in turn, and the mood started to change. This is the frenzy that came before our battle. This is our only chance to avenge our brothers who fell victim to their dishonorable ambush, Ferdinand declared, to wipe away the shame of our failure to protect those whose lives were in our hands. Sir, yes, sir. 
Do not forgive those fools who put their country in danger by choosing to ally with a foreign power. Sir, yes, sir. Let not a single ransacker go free. Sir, yes, sir. As the atmosphere became electric, Ferdinand called my name. I slowly approached and moved one step ahead of him, ready to do the obvious. It was time to bless the knights heading into battle. May those of you going into battle be blessed, I said, holding my staff tight. First by Verdred of the goddess of thunder and Gravechan, the goddess of luck, subordinates to Blue Train, the goddess of water. Green light rained down on the knights. They must never have received a blessing before. If the looks of total shock on their faces were anything to go by. Then by Angriff, the god of war, and dang it, uh, Slog Zeal, the god of hunting, subordinates to Laden Chef, the god of fire. That was a new one, I think. This time the light was blue. Ferdinand placed a hand on my back and told me that was enough. This was no small group to pray for, but I shook my head in protest. I wanted to give everyone as many blessings as I could. I mean, you don't want to get too many because then you won't be able to fight very well. It wasn't like I needed to conserve my mana. I was useless in battle, and I could just drink an ultra-nasty rejuvenation potion when it was t came time to teleport everyone. I was acting out of my own selfish desire not to see anyone else turn into a face stone. And also by Stife Breeze, the goddess of the gale, and... Dold sets in the goddess of endurance, subordinates to Shutsaria, the goddess of the wind. As soon as I was done, we departed en masse to this pitch black world with a sea and sky blended into one. The only light came from the border and country gates. I was riding with Ferdinand and drinking a rejuvenation potion of the kind variety. We couldn't risk all the flailing about that came with the ultra nasty ones, not when we were so high up. I appreciated his consideration, but I thought I could do without the lecture. How many times must I tell you not to overdo it, fool? Blessing such a large group at one place at once places far too great a burden on your body. Have you forgotten how much money you will need to teleport everyone to the Royal Academy? Not at all. My mana will regenerate, but those we lose in battle will never return. If giving them multiple blessings will increase their chances of survival, then I consider it worthwhile, no matter how much it might inconvenience me. The last thing I wanted was the weight of even more deaths on my conscience. You can't blame her on that one, dude. You really are troublesome, Ferdinand sighed. I opened the border gate as Ob Aaron's buck then used my book of Messenora on the country gate. Because I could, still couldn't stomach using my panda bus, my retinue had to take the stairs. My knights were the first ones to enter since they had used the country gate before. Eckert was last. He was serving as our rear guard, as so I closed the gate once he was safely inside. Grugishai, Ferdinand said, when we were finally alone, only those with the book of Messenora could enter the gate from above. He used Ruckin as we passed through the barrier. Am I just a cover for you, I asked. He was using his book as much as he pleased, yet hadn't shown any intention of revealing it. Indeed, now make your Bible shine brightly enough for all to see. Swallowing the darkness is my duty. Yeah, yeah, stay in the shadows and keep pulling the strings. Once we were ready for them, I told the Ehrensbach knights coming up the stairs to stand on the teleportation circle. I did as instructed, curiously looking around all the while. I confirmed that everyone was in place, then moved my fingers, tapping the magic circle on my tablet, and said, Care... Schlozel er, stared at. The circle rose up from the screen and spun faster and faster while shining with the light of all seven elements. Next, the teleportation circle on the ground started to move. My mana was sucked out from above and below until my vision went completely white and the feeling of weightlessness unique to teleportation took over. The epilogue! Finally! Okay, 33 minutes. Warm sunlight streamed into the Royal Academy's forest where Gervasio was was resting a hand against the door of a li dimly lit shrine. He had finally obtained the last... Oh, no, he's been doing that! Oh, great. Obtained the last tablet he needed. He might not have equated to obtaining the Grudgeshite, but the most essential part of the process was now complete. Great. Gervasio let in a hushed sigh, only to have Detlindy hurry him from on from behind. Lord Gervasio... Gervasio, she said. Please be quick, if you would. This woman's urging aside, Gervasio had yet to finish playing the role assigned to him. He made his step, cleaned the shrine store with wash, and then ascended the stairs so that Deadlandy could take over. Expertly done, Robert said, having elected to wait near the bottom of the shrine. Despite the circumstances, Gervasio looked somewhat displeased. I should not need to say it, but your words have cost me a lot of mana. He groaned. At the very start of their shrine tour, Robert had explained to Deadlandy that Lady Rosemont had simply washed the shrines with wash in and then prayed. It was a necessary lie, since Detlindy wasn't able to enter the shrine, but Gervasio had needed to waste so much mana to uphold it. And that's that, Detlindy exclaimed. Okay, never mind. Never mind! They're faking her out. They're faking her out. They know she's not going to be able to do it, of course. And that's that, Detlindy exclaimed, sounding as pleased as ever. Her voice rang out just as an ordinance came into view. 
This is Herscher, Aaron Fest Dormitory Supervisor. It would seem that outsiders have gained access to the Royal Academy. A report indicates they were last seen near the Scholar Building. I am requesting the Sovereign Knight's order to look into and capture them. Everyone paled. Someone was nearby. Hide in the trees. Now, Robot snapped while the Ordinon spoke its message again. The forest would shelter them from anyone patrolling the sky. We need to return to the dormitory without being seen. Yeah, right. Robot then clucked, outraged that someone had ventured outside the dormitory, against his orders, no less. Well, too bad, dude. He picked up the order that his face on and said, This is Robot, the Sovereign Knight Commander. We will search for them at once. Return to your dormitory until further notice. The others had already moved away from the shrine to retreat into the forest. Robot urged them to go deeper when another Ordinance arrived. This is Rafa, Dunkelfelger's dormitory supervisor. It has come to my attention that there are intruders on the Academy's grounds. Please allow me to serve as a guard or join the fighting. I will demonstrate my worth. This is Robot. Do throw your consideration is appreciated. It is the duty of the Sovereign Knight's order to find and imprison outsiders. I must ask that you wait in your dormitory. It was bad enough that Rafa was trying to get involved, but then another Ordinance arrived. Robert shot his arm out for the bird to perch on, annoyed to be dealing with yet another interruption. This is so launched. Professor Hersher just informed me that outsiders have infiltrated the Royal Academy. Could she have mistakenly been referring to your retainers? The ones you brought to retrieve her Hortensia's belongings, I mean. Would you allow me to explain to Professor Hersher that Hortensia passed away? What? Uh, did you kill her? Great. Poor thing died. Indeed, Robert had told the librarian that he needed to collect his late wife's possessions, the perfect excuse to head straight to the library once Gervasio had visited all the shrines. Was he even able to get in there? If so, oh, never mind. This is Robert. Thank you for your message. I intend to announce my wife's passing during the next Arch 2 conference when I shall ask the Zen to send you another Arch librarian. My apologies, but please continue to keep this a secret. I will contact Professor Hersher to explain things. Once the Ordinance had departed, Robot groaned in frustration. If only so much had contacted him first, he thought. Then he could have robbed Hersher into the deception. In any case, we have finished circling the shrines, Robot announced. We should hurry along to the library. As I said, I must collect my late wife's belongings. Lord Gervasio, Gervasio, whatever, would you care to meet Professor Solange? The name does ring a bell, Gervasio replied. Granting, rating her sounds like a worthwhile endeavor. They had gone over their plan well in advance, so he knew the next step was to head to the underground archive. So he's trying to get a Grudgeshite. Okay. Oh my, Detlinde murmured. Allow me to come with you then. Uh, no, not a good idea for you guys, but it'd be a good idea if you blew their cover. Everyone started. Letting her tag along would ruin their cover story. That isn't an option, I'm afraid, Robert finally said. Lord Gervasio is a fresh face here, so I can claim he is my attendant, but someone as famous as Jurgen Schmidt's next Zent would never go unnoticed. Yes, it certainly is true. She gave a proud sm a proud nod, suddenly convinced. My status as a Zen candidate is known so widely that I stand out wherever I go. No, you stand out for another reason, by being an idiot. Considerate our trip to the library a distraction for you, the means by which you can safely return to the villa. Everyone ensures she makes it there without its incident. Having dealt with that Lende, Rob Robo gave Gervasio the signal that it was time for them to go. They headed to the library with his attendants, who were disguised as knights. Robert, these ordinances seemed concerning, Gervasio said. Professor Rothman might be wise to us, in which case Dunkelfelder will question the Zent and start calling for aid. A threat of that happening is precisely why we need to obtain the Grudgeshite now before they come charging in. As far as Robert was concerned, there was a good chance Dunkelfelder would take their side once Gervasio had the Grudgeshite. The greater Duchy seemed far more open to negotiating than Klassenberg, whose greatest priority had been returning Eglantines of the royal family. I see, then let us hurry. Rabba and those disguised as members of the Knight Sovereign Knights Order formed a circle around Gervasio and the group started toward the library. Anyone who spotted them now would think the Order was marching a captured prisoner. This place is exactly as I remember it, Gervasio murmured, watching the scenery beyond the forest with a warm look in his eyes. The memories are all coming back to me. The blooming flowers, a pleasant reminder of spring, drew his attention to the gazebos dotting the land near the Scholar Building. There had been a time where he would sit, eat lunch, and enjoy tea in them between study sessions at the library. Robert chuckled. I remember being told to go with you to the library not long after receiving my initial assignment. He had just come of age, and his features had betrayed that youth. Yes, I can still picture the shock on your face, not that it was warranted. There was nothing strange about having to guard your charge in a day out. Well, I was unaware of the villa's circumstances. I thought I was being assigned to guard Lady Vomerlene after her baptism, not serve House Lowweiler in its entirety. There were three special rooms in the Adulgis Villa, each bearing the name of a Jürgen Schmidt flower. Corelli, Shentis, and Lawaler, Lawaler. Those born there were moved from the main building to the side building once they were baptized because paternal half-siblings, half-sisters, weren't recognized as family in Jürgen Schmidt. 
The children were divided into three separate groups, each with its own mother. Legitimate members of the royal family had their own guards, but those assigned to the adulterous villa had to serve one of three group, its three groups. There was no need to give the villa's residents their own knights. It seldom went beyond its grounds and needed guards only when going to the Royal Academy. As a new recruit of the Sovereign Knights Order, Robbo had been ordered to serve Lawyler after Valmarline, Gervasio's younger sister of the same mother, was baptized. You would do well to know that I acted for your sake, Gervasio remarked. Outside of winter, you knights had nothing to do but watch the villa. I thought a new recruit would find it suffocating. Is that so? Was it not because you thought a younger knight would be more lenient and allow you more peace? Robert was nearly the same age as Gervasio as he had always accompanied the boy when he traveled to the Royal Palace or the Royal Academy's library. Even once he was 10 years old, Gervasio had been forbidden from attending the Royal, Royal Academy for a number of reasons. The next King of Lanzanov didn't need the full education of a Jürgen Schmidt noble. There was nothing to gain from letting him get attached to the country he was due to leave upon coming of age, and the existence of the adulterous villa needed to be kept private. Instead, he had studied during other seasons with royals or members of a branch family as his, as his instructors. Gervasio hadn't socialized with any nobles outside the royal family, but he had been encouraged to so associate with the Zet and their children at the time. It had been necessary to learn of the villa's history and purpose and to keep it alive as time marched on. I remember it clear as day, Gervasio said. You told me time and time again that I was better suited to becoming the Zet than Prince Wil Waldefred, did you not? I stand by those words even now, Robert replied, one eyebrow cocked in surprise. In fact, King Gervasio, I would say that nobody is better suited to the role than you. Uh... Maybe, maybe not. We don't know. Robo had disliked the power struggles within his house. A branch of Jalesen Meyer's Archducal family and aimed to become a sovereign knight to escape them. He had come to believe it was better to judge people based on their talents than the circumstances of their birth. Thank you. So it had frustrated him to no end when Jürgen Schmidt's royal family had mistreated Gervasio, a man of such great mind and intellect. For years, I've worked under King Trollqual, Robo continued. I understand his struggle and the heroics of his continued dedication in Jürgen Schmidt, but my time in the service has only reinforced my conviction that a Zent must have the Gruchashite. He who wishes to rule must have the means to do so, which is why I pray from the bottom of my heart that his seat will become yours. Well then, who's going to be the King of Lanzanov if he's here? I see, then I shall reward your loyalty. The two exchanged smiles as they arrive outside the entrance to the Royal Academy's library. Robot took out and presented a face stone, and the door opened in response to Hortensia. Fuck! Either that's her face stone, or that's just Mana he took from her. I was hoping it's the latter, because I don't want to think about that being Hortensia herself. Hortensia's back. Welcome, Hortensia. The black and white shoe mills came over, having also reacted to the face stone's Mana. Solange was with them. She had aged considerably from when Gervasio had late seen her last, but the same went for him as well. If nothing else, he was relieved to see that her bright smile and peaceful blue eyes hadn't changed. Solange, ah, how much time has passed? It is I, Gervasio of the Royal Branch family. Do you remember me? Goodness, it really has been a while. I was told your sickness required you to go somewhere far away. It warms my heart to see you out. Oh, so long, if only you knew. Ooh, this is what he looks like. Okay. Interesting. Very interesting. If only he was a nice guy. He could have been a valuable asset to Jürgen Schmidt, but no, he has to go and do all this. Solange's words reminded Gervasio of the cover story Jürgen Schmidt's royals had given him. To hide the existence of the Adolfo Sevilla, they had said he was part of the royal branch family, but couldn't attend the royal academy due to his poor health. Out of sympathy for the boy's situation, the Zent had permitted him to use the library during the off-season. Then, when it came time for Gervasio to leave for Lanzanov, they had declared that his deteriorating health had required him to leave the sovereignty. Oh, what a farce it had been. I am here to gather Hortensia's things, Robot said, holding up a folded teleportation circle. We do not have long before the Royal Academy cl closes. Why, you take her, me to her room? Solange nodded, then took her guests into her office. She opened the door to the librarian's dormitory and called to her attendant. Catherine, Lord Robot is here. Please take him to Hortensia's room. The attendant arrived in short order and gestured the night commander inside. Thank you for coming. Please follow me, she said. Lord Gervasio, please wait here and speak with Professor Solange, Robot said, then headed into the dormitory with those disguised as sovereign knights. Though he claimed to be retrieving his late wife's belongings, his actual objective was to search for the keys to the underground archive. It was necessary that each key be assigned to a separate archnoble, so they were most likely being kept in the archlibrarian's rooms. Lord Gervasio, Solange said, I thought you would never return, but to see you here, and with Lord Robot as well, this really is just like old times. Yes, it would seem we have a mutual attachment to one another, because that was his first assignment as a sovereign knight. I would assume I could not help but accept his invitation. 
Robert had served Gervasio until the latter's departure for Lonsonov. He had even fought to honor his charge's last request, that he protect and, if possible, marry von Marlene. Had the suggestion come from anyone else, Gervasio would not have even considered returning to Jürgen Schmidt to obtain the Grutscheid. You were such a bookworm back then, weren't you, so under reminisced, always with your nose in a book. Do you still read even now? There is one book I wish to obtain, one that cannot be found anywhere else. Oh, God. Like I said, if this guy hadn't been a bad guy, Rosemine would have loved to meet with this guy and talk books with him. But no, he had to be a bad guy. Well, this library contains books not found anywhere else in Jürgen Schmidt. If you will tell me what you're looking for, I can have Schwartz and Weiss find it for you. She moved toward the reading room, evidently unaware that Gervasio was looking not for some ordinary book, but for the Grutescheid. Professor Solange came a voice. Oh, Lord Robert, were you unable to find something? Solange asked, confused as to why the night commander had returned so soon. Gervasio could guess from Robert's expression that he hadn't found the keys to the underground archive. They must have been taken out of the dormitory and stored somewhere else. He didn't want to hurt his longtime friend, but they had to find those keys at any cost. Robert reached down to his waist just as an ordnance flew into the room. Oh my, another one, Solange mused aloud. There have been so many today. I wonder whom it came here for. The bird flew in a circle, then landed on her wrist. This is Hersher. Solange, are you safe? I'm concerned that you didn't respond to my last message. What? Solange murmured, looking increasingly concerned as the ordinance repeated its message. She turned to Robert. Um, were you not going to reply in my stead? I received so many ordinances that I might have forgotten, Robot said. He maintained an unfaltering calm, even as he once again moved to take something from his waist. Solange reached for the yellow face him, but Robert was faster. He seized her arms and clapped steps, stealing bracelets on her wrists. But well, Robert, are these what I think they are? Gravazio gave Solange an apologetic look. Forgive us, but we cannot rescue contacting the outside and causing a stir. Not right now. If we let you explain or respond, who knows what you might say. Hortensia's room didn't contain the keys to the underground archive, Robert added. Tell us where they are. The underground archive? Solange couldn't believe what she was hearing. Lord Gervasio, do you not tell me you're here to... Might I ask you to be up front with us, Gervasio interjected, admonishing her gently. I cannot bear the thought of harming an old friend, but I must warn you, the sentiment does not extend to your attendant. What have you done with Catherine? She is bound and unable to use her staff, Robert answered. No harm has come to her. Not yet. But that might change depending on your response. Solange paled as Robert took out his staff and transformed it into a sword. She watched its glimmering blade for a moment, but then cast her eyes down and said, Very well, I will fetch them for you. To avoid a repeat of her past struggle to retrieve the keys, Solange had elected to store them in her desk. She took them out and then lined them up with trembling hands. So these are what you've been looking for, or what we've been looking for. Gervasio accepted the keys and alongside his companions overwrote the manna within them. Manna belonging to Hortensia and two members of the library committee who had agreed to assist her. Is there nothing else we need to enter the archive? Take this key to the second closed stack archive and this one for the door inside. I see. Wait here while we are gone, Robert said, taking the keys before binding Solange in place. They couldn't allow her to run away and contact someone who while they were in the archive. I will come back to unbind you once I have obtained the Grudgeshite, Gervasio promised. I ask only that you remain here in silence until then. Now prone and unable to move, Solange made no attempt to meet the man's gaze. Instead, she spoke to the shoemills in a quavering voice. Shorts, Weiss, guide them to the underground archive. Gervasio followed the shoemills out of the office. They went from the reading room to the second closed stack archive, then through a door leading into the underground archive. The dull patter of footsteps accompanied their journey downstairs. This leads to the Grudgeshite, then, Gervasio asked. I am impressed you were able to discover all this. In truth, it was largely the work of an Aaronfest Archduke candidate, though Lady Serendine's son was pulling her strings. Gervasio thought back to Serendina, his elder sister by blood. So his... So this is Ferdinand Ferdinand's brother... But his uncle, ooh, that's going to be awkward. He could still envision her light golden eyes and perfectly straight silver hair and the sagacious features that complemented them. People had often said they looked very much alike. Gervasio had spent about two years with Saradina after being baptized and moved into the side building, yet she, he had interacted with her far less than one normally would with a maternal sister. Upon coming of age, she had returned to the main building as a Lowellier Lowellier flower, whereas Gervasio had departed the villa as the next king of Lanzanov, compared to his little sister, Valamarly, Marlene, he had spent barely any time with her. In fact, he hadn't seen her at all since she had taken leave of the villa. Do you mean that rare seed who escaped the villa, Gervasio asked? Ferdinand, was it? The children born in the Adalgis of Villa were assigned roles based on their gender, birth order, and mana capacity. Girls could serve as flowers, buds, gardeners, or seeds. Boys were always seeds. 
Flowers were girls who returned to the main building after coming of age. This role normally went to the eldest daughter of each of the three houses, which is why Sarah Dina had served as the flower of Lowell Weiler. Buds were girls with the potential to become flowers. They were treated as members of a royal branch family after their baptism, but would be returned to the main building if anything happened to the flowers there. Otherwise, they had to find marriage partners, else they would end up being turned into face stones. Valla Marlene had once been a bud of Lowiler. Gardeners were girls who served the villa after coming of age. They were baptized not as members of a royal branch family, but as the children of the villa's head attendant, and subsequently worked under her as arch attendants. One of Gervasio's siblings had been a gardener, but due to the timing of their baptisms, he did not remember her. Last of all, there were seeds, children destined to become face stones before their baptism. Gervasio had been raised as one before being chosen to become the next king of Londonov. He had escaped being turned into a face stone only because he had possessed the most mana out of all the boys in the villa. Ferdinand was an exceptionally unusual case, having escaped the villa without being selected to rule. Indeed, Robert said, the loss of that seed was the reason Lady Val Valamar Marlene was summoned back to the villa to serve as Lewiler's new flower. Gervasio had doted on Valla Marlene, and she had loved him dearly in return. That was why he had asked Rava to protect her, and even marry her, if possible, before his departure for Londonov. Of course, such a request was much easier said than done, though. Rava was a member of an archducal branch family. He was still an archnoble, whereas Val Valla Marlene's family was associated with royalty. It was only through blood, sweat, and tears that he had managed to secure the engagement, and then she died, I think. Valla Marlene had come, then come of age, but while her marriage to Rava was still on the horizon... Saradina's son had been taken from the villa. Robert had been told the reason, only that it was the guidance of the goddess of time. Of course, that's what uh, his father told him. The loss of a boy had meant the loss of a face stone, so Saradina had become one in his place. Oh, and Valla Marlene, who had just come of age, had been sent back to the villa to take over as the Weiler's flower. Those were the rules, meaning they were unavoidable, but Robert's pain when the Zent had the time had dissolved his engagement had been too intense to describe. Oh, that's why. So is she still there? Or is she dead by this point? After the Civil War, when the Adolgis of Villa was sealed off, Valla Marlene and all the other occupants had ended up, okay, they were, she's dead, had ended up being executed. Robo had failed not only to keep his promise to Gervasio, but also to protect the woman he loved most. That man does not understand his place as a seed of Adolgis, nor does he understand the harm he caused so many by leaving the villa, Robo said, bad. A hatred oozing from his everywhere. That's why he doesn't like Ferdinand, okay. Because it was because of him that he lost the love of his life and she died. I will not let him have... He, too bad! He's already got it! He's already got part of it! Part of it, anyway. <laughs> Gervasio gave a wry smile. Robert's loyalty was founded in a complex maelstrom of emotions, memories of their past together, his regret over Gervasio's younger sister, and even his resentment of the royal family. That was what made him such a trustworthy ally. He wasn't someone who would change sides or resort to betrayal without excellent reason. The group reached the bottom of the stairs to find themselves in the pure white room, the farthest wall of which gleamed as though it were made of metal. Three equidescent ornaments stood out on its surface. Three line up. Lock will open. The key holders did as instructed and slid their keys into the slots. Their mana formed magic circles which caused the glimmering wall to start rotating in three pieces. They moved 180 degrees, almost completely close enough to connect again, then disappeared, revealing the previously hidden archive. And this is where the Grigishite is held. Gervasio inhaled sharply at the fantastical light, and the white shoe wheel took his hand. Guide you, Gervasio, he had said, and then continued into the archive. King Gervasio, Robot said, as I understand it, only members of the royal family can pass beyond this point. Now that you have returned to your branch family, I'm sure it will. He fell silent, seemingly in prayer. Gervasio turned slightly and nodded. It was because Robo had involved the sovereign temple that he had already been re-registered to a royal branch family. He saw no reason why he wouldn't be allowed into the archive. Eh, I don't know if a branch family will be enough. I think you have to be actual, actual royalty. I will obtain the Grudishite. His resolve steeled, Gervasio passed through the invisible barrier, entered the archive, and followed the stream mills to a door even further beyond. But even he was repelled when he reached the mad circle. Ha ha! That's what he gets. Knew a branch family probably wouldn't be enough. Not registered, Gervasio. Cannot enter. Being in a branch family wasn't enough. Gervasio couldn't ignore the humiliation he felt as he was once again reminded that in Jurgen Schmidt, he wasn't true royalty. Something he hadn't been able to ignore during his youth. His mana and elements were far superior, yet the country's leadership depended entirely on one's birth. King Gervasio, the circle repelled me. Being in a branch family was not enough. There was a deep furrow in Robert's brow. He said nothing in response, but his clenched, trembling fist spoke volumes. We have no reason to stay here any longer. Let us return, Gervasio said, giving Robert a light pat on the shoulder. As they ascended the stairs, he continued, The Archduke candidate from Arenfest was on the right path. There is no doubt in my mind that she was approaching the Gutrashite. I am told she went missing. 
Do you know what else she did or what she might have found? Robert looked up with a start. According to Prince Stigiswall, she went missing after going to the library's second floor. Perhaps there is a clue there. Oh, no. Fuck. Fuck, fuck, fuck! Gervasio's group returned the keys to the shoe mills and then briskly made their way to the upstairs reading room. Once there, they began searching for anything that might lead them to the Grootshite. Ah, that must be it, Gervasio said. What must be? That statue of the goddess of wisdom. Gervasio had recognized it at once, but Robert didn't seem to understand. He simply eyed the statue with a look of confusion. Was it because Gervasio had seen such statues nonstop during his circling of the shrines, or because statues were so common in Jürgen Schmidt's castles that its nobles no lar- longer even noticed them? Is the Grutishite not a copy of Messinora's divine instrument, Gervasio said. Ah, I see. I suspect I will need to pray to Messinora, but the statue isn't draining my mana automatically, as the shrines did. What should I do? Gervasio examined the statue with his arms crossed. Messinora was often depicted as a child, so she was the one and only goddess who wore her hair down. The statue was ivory, like all the others at the Royal Academy, and with the exception of the divine instruments in its hands, that alone was colored and adorned with face stones. Recreating the divine instruments would give one the Grutishite. O oh, Mestinora, goddess of wisdom, I pray that you grant me your divine instrument. Gervasio touched the divine instrument, mentally reinforcing his desire to create it. Oh, here we go. And suddenly felt his mana being sucked out. His eyes widened in surprise, but he didn't resist it. Soon enough, Gervasio lost track of how much mana he had channeled into the tool. It felt close to the amount the shrines had taken from him. As he started to think he might need a rejuvenation potion, a magic circle and word arose in his mind. Ah, oh, shit. Well, this is not good. Grudgeshite, Gervasio said, and with that, he disappeared. Well, ah, uh, boy. Well, I think he's going to get a Grudgeshite, because I know there can be multiple copies. Though, considering Ferdinand's got part of one and rosemont has got the other part, is he going to be even be able to get one because all that knowledge is now gone? Or can there be, like, multiple copies of the knowledge? What's he, where am I going to tell him? Oh, boy, we maybe we'll find out. Anyway, that's going to be probably next book. I will see you guys in the next part.